So you didn't put your name? Amanda. Amanda. Yep. Oh, you didn't get. I should have given this to everybody. It's weird. It should have been that little packet I gave you. No? Okay. Alright, guys, so any suggestions on what to look at? And again, if you're coming in late, you're probably going to want to see me after class real quick just to get stuff. Yes? Okay. See, I don't want to work this. How do I want to work? should know is the, the BMX formula, y equals mx plus b. Right? Yeah. Good old famous stuff. What's m? Slope. Why is it m? Because of French. French marche means to walk and they took m from that word. Just so you know now. Yeah, yeah I know now. I feel more complete. And b, of course, is the y-intercept. If you don't have the y-intercept, there's another way you could do it. And that's the other formula that actually comes from y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You multiply the x's up and you get something like y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Let me write that down. Now what does this formula require? What do we have to know to be able to use this? I have to know the slope and I have to know a point. Do I know a point? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Check. So I gotta know slope and I gotta know a point. The point I got, <laughs> negative one, two. Aw, oh, Jeff. There you go. So whenever I, I have a, a problem that says find the equation of the line that stuff, I wanna find these two things always. If the point that I know is the y-intercept, kick ass. The y piece is b. I can get the answer so much faster. If I don't, too bad. Got a little more work to do. Uh, so what am I missing, of course? Slope. Now what do I tell you that's going to help you figure out your slope? So I tell you that is perpendicular to this guy. So if I knew this guy's slope, I could figure out my slope. And what's the quickest way to determine a line's slope? Yeah, put it in the mx plus b form. Solve for y. So there is a lot kind of going on in this problem. But it's not, you know, this is what kind of drives you. Those are the things I need. How do I get what I need from what they told me? That's what's driving you. So they told me this. All right. Oh, okay. Perpendicular slope stuff. What's this guy's slope? Well, i got to solve for y. What do you get when you solve that for y? Yeah, you get y equals negative one half x plus five over four. I love it. Now, is that a pretty wider stuff? No. The wider stuff is a pretty. No. Why do I not care? Because all I care about from this line is his 
slow. That's all I care about. So sometimes I purposefully make this like 111 over 17 or something. Who gives a shit? I don't need his y intercept. All I need, his slope is negative one half. So what's my slope? Yeah. So my slope will be the negative reciprocal of this. Positive two, right? Change the sign and flip it. So parallel, they have to have the exact same slope. Does that make sense? If they don't have the exact same slope, one of them is going to rise quicker or fall quicker. It's going to hit the other guy. So parallel has got to be exactly the same. Perpendicular has got to be totally opposite, right? So it's got to be negative reciprocals of each other so that they hit at a 90 degree angle. Oh, shit, Jeff. Okay, so M is 2. Oh, I see what's going on. Bam. So why am I way down on all the buttons? That's crappy design. No, it's not just stupid check. Okay. So now I got everything I need. I can plug it in. So again, what goes here? Y minus what? Y minus the Y piece. That's what this formula means. There's the Y piece of the point. There's the X piece of the point. What do I put here and here? Now they, they have to represent all the points. You don't put any values in them. So Y minus the Y piece. Yeah. Equals m times x minus the x piece. So see the two things I need, I put them in once I find them. And then I can just clean this up a little bit. Y minus 2 equals 2 times x plus 1, right? The two negatives. Y minus 2 equals 2x plus 2. Y equals 2x plus 1. Yeah. <coughs> Started off really right and big, and then it got small. Is that is that cool? Is that all right? Does that come back to you a little bit? If not, then you better force it back for tomorrow. Oh shit! So if I had said parallel, if I had said they were parallel, I what would have changed? Yeah, I wouldn't have used two. I would have used negative one half. It would, parallel means they're the same. To look for that. Don't just always do what I did here. Why did I do it? Because I said perpendicular. That's why I did it. Yes. Uh, real quick. Is everybody cool with that problem? Yes. What happened, sir? Well, you're adding this now. Yes. No. Just add the two to get y by itself. How can you? Huh? Oh, wow. All right. I like this. That's the wait and see approach to teaching. Ask a question. Wait a minute. Maybe it's, maybe it's gone. All right. You guys want to look at something else in the practice test? Yes. For which one? E. Oh, yeah. All right. So for E. This guy. And of course, what tells you what to do? Well, what do you always try first? GCF. If you don't, if you haven't run into enough mistakes by not doing that first, I don't understand. You should have. So now you should just automatically do, just make sure there's, if there's no GCF, okay. If there is, take that sucker out, man. That might be the only, is there any GCF? No. This has got no numbers. This has got no X's. So nobody's got something everybody else has. So then what tells me what to do? There's four terms. I love it. There's four terms that tells me to group. Kick ass. Bam, bam. So what comes out of those first two? X squared. X squared. Now to make this an x, I got to take out a negative nine. A lot of you guys leave this sign out. Why? Why? Don't do that. It's there, and you keep making mistakes. You just put a plus just because you know something's supposed to be there, but it's a minus. And of course, you took out a negative nine. So what's left? X plus because it changes the sign there, and you know you're on the right track. If these are not the same, don't do another step. If you can't figure out why they're not the same, put a little note. I know they're supposed to be the same. You know what that does for you? It gives you partial credit. 
gives you some more parts of credit. If you do another step, you lose about points. Because the basic idea of this is these have to be the same. Or I can't do I can't keep going. So now what can I do? Sure, x squared minus 9, plus 2, I take that x plus 2 out. Beautiful. And just make sure, if you feel like you're done, say to yourself, hey, me, I don't know. This can go further. Oh, shit. So x plus 3, x minus 3. What's wrong with this? Yeah, you left somebody out. That sucks. It's like me saying factor 18, and you say 3 times 6. You know, I just didn't write it. What? 18 <laughs> isn't equal 3. So you can't lose anybody, or else this will never multiply back out to be the original. Your answer has to be another way to write the original problem. It has to be the same thing. Okay, I like it. Which one? Number three? Seven. Oh, yeah. So again, the ultimate best form for a line is y equals mx. Yeah, y equals mx plus b. Now, if I say like number eight says find the intercepts, do I have to put it in that form? Oh, hell no. All right, so we'll look at that maybe next. So here, what do I want to do? I want to solve for y. And the crazy thing, I mean, this happens a lot in mathematics. There's an intimate connection between an equation and the way it looks when you graph it. So a lot of you guys, if I said what's an x squared look like, not all of us remembers, but who remembers what an x squared looks like? Anybody know what an x squared looks like if you graph it? Flat. <laughs> looks like a u, right? It's a parabola, otherwise known as parabola. I love it when people are like, God, this guy's teaching me. <laughs> it's just fun to say a parabola and hyperbola and all that kind of stuff. All right. So... Uh, if I solve for y, that's the form that most closely matches its, its graph. So if I solve for y, I can see things about it that would be represented in the graph. Namely, I, of course, I can see the slope and the y-intercept. So if I solve for y, I add 6. Then I divide by 2. There you go. My God. Is that decent? Solve for y. Be very careful about as you solve for y. Now, I did something interesting, and I did it kind of on purpose. I think, uh, yes, I did. Ha, ha. What is the slope here? And then what would that mean in, in uh, slope words for graphing? Up 3 over 2, right? Mathematically, isn't this the same number? Yeah. So math would go, what? Your, what? The shit, man. It's the same stupid thing. But slope-wise, the second way I wrote it means down three, back two. Now, if I go up three, over two, down three, back two, am I not on the same stupid line, right? If I can go from my house to your house, I better be able to go back to my freaking house, right? <laughs> Depending on the time of day around here, but yeah. Yes? So should you not cancel out two negatives? No, you should, totally, all day long. But what I'm trying to tell you right now is uh, when I plot the y-intercept, the next point, if I go up 3 over 2, is off my graph. Yeah. And you guys really should never try to draw your own because you never aren't going to be able to do it right. You're not a computer, thank God. I'm trying to show you an idea of how to do something. If your graph isn't cooperating, I, I can't go up that high, so... Let me go down. So the y-intercept is 3. And then I can go down 3. Instead of going up 3, oh shit, that's off my graph. Let me go down 1, 2, 3, and back 1, 2. If I went up 1, 2, 3, and over 2, wouldn't I still be on the same line? I love you guys. So if I went, oh, it's all Valentine's Day. And shit. A lot of you guys are wearing red. It's nice. I wore red. I didn't even do it on purpose. All right. 
If I go up 6 over 4 from that point, will I still be in the same line? Yeah. Of course I will, because that reduces the 3 halves. Any multiples of 3 over 2 will be the same line if you do that much, if you go that much. If I went 3 over 2 twice, that's 6 over freaking 4, and then I've got to be able to go back down to the point I just came from. So that's all this is doing. I didn't do this to make this problem harder. I'm just showing you the flexibility that you sometimes don't even know you have. When, when a slope is negative, do you put it on the top or the bottom? Whichever one you want. You just got to interpret it correctly. So math says 3 over negative 2 is the same thing as negative 3 over 2. But slope says, oh, I'm going back home or going to my... I don't know. It depends on which way I'm going to go. Which way you want to go. Same number, because the slope <laughs> has got to be a single thing. Just different ways to interpret it visually. All right, all right. I like it. And sometimes people are like, man, he can make a problem so complicated. I'm trying to show you the flexibility, like I said. Is that, is that decent? That explains what I did on the answer key. If you're like, what the shit did you do? I didn't want to go off my graph. That's all. Okay. Yes? Uh, <coughs> Oh, okay. Uh, so 10, you've got, this is the distance rate time problem, right? You got Alex and George. I could have made it Penny and Georgie, but no. And again, what do you do with this? You try to figure out, what can I just put in there? What do I know for sure? So Rudy, what do I know for sure about this problem? I know for sure. I don't know how to do it. Yeah, well, no. I don't have a clue about the speed. I know how they relate. But what do I know? Don't need any algebra for I just know it. Yeah, Alex went 60 miles. Georgie went 80 miles. Sweet. That feels good. Just numbers. Ooh. Now you got to bring some freaking algebra in, right? Which one of these guys is going to be just X for their speed? George. George. Yeah, because George. Alex is traveling four miles an hour slower than George, so whatever George is, Alex is going to be built off of that. So if I make George, guys, if I make George X, what's Alex going to be? X minus four. And since distance equals rate times time, time equals distance divided by rate. So that tells me how to fill in this last box. So if I know the distance and I know the rate, I know the time. I just divide the two. So what's it look like? And what does this problem say? It says that the signs are the same. It's so the same time. So how do I like get an equation then? This time equals this time. And what's the shortcut for doing that problem? Cross multiply it. Like, because it's one fraction equals one fraction, not to do it without having to worry. So I get 60x equals 80x. Minus 320. You solve that thing and you get the same answers I got on the answer key. All right, did it once. You guys can just look at that. <laughs> so do you have to make this chart? No. But it is a nice organizational tool. Keep track of everything you know. So we saw it could be two different people, it could be going upstream, downstream, and so it could be the same vehicle. Just two different situations somehow. I got nothing, this is your day, yes. <laughs> Six F? Oh yeah. 
So I did it a different way on the answer key, mostly because I was going to run out of room if I tried to do anything else. So you guys can do it the way I did it on the answer key if you understand what happened. Let's do it the way that we kind of did it in class. Kind of two ways to do this, really. I could treat the top as a problem, treat the bottom as a problem, and then multiply by the reciprocal at the end. If I can make the top one fraction and the bottom one fraction, I know how to attack that. So that's a general way you could do any of these. And then there's the way, I think the, the second way I did it was I treated all four at once. And that's kind of related to what I did on the, the answer key. So let's do the first way first. Sounds logical, Jeff. So looking at the top as its own problem, what is this guy missing? The, it's pretty simple, right? X, Y. It's probably missing the stuff you don't have, Jeff. All right, all right, jeez. So on the top I get... Because now they both have the same denominator, so I can just slap numerators together. Is that decent right there? You guys have got, I know you hate fractions in the first place, and here I am throwing freaking X's and D's and C's in there. But this does not work any different than any other fraction anywhere. They all act the same way. What about the bottom? What is this guy missing? A Y. A y. And this guy's missing. So in the bottom I get, over X squared Y I get 5Y minus, minus X cubed. So now this is fraction divided by fraction. How do I do that? I take fraction multiplied by reciprocal. There you guess? Does it make sense? <coughs> if I have a fraction divided by a fraction, I know how to do that. You just multiply by the reciprocal. How did it start off? It started off as a couple of subtraction of frac. Oh my god. Combine the top, combine the bottom, now I know what to do. So I can write this as 2xy minus 3 over xy times. Come here. X squared Y over 5Y minus, no, Jeff, X cubed. There you go, buddy. What happens between these two guys? Yeah, X cancels and a Y cancels. So on the top here, if you want to get distributed, you get 2X squared Y minus 3X over 5Y minus X cubed because there's nothing left over here. Is that what I got? Thank God. Alright. Is that alright? I think a lot of times, again, if you do this, if you look at all this, you're like, oh, I will never be able to do. That's insane. Look at every step I took. You gotta break a problem down into parts. Holy shit, we're almost out of time. Guys know, do you guys know, did I send to you like a map of where my office is? I, was, I never did take you on a field trip, but do you guys know where my office is? <laughs> so you know where the parking structure is? Yes. You know where the parking structure is, right? Yeah. To the south of that, in the parking lot, there's a compound out there. It looks like a military base. Is that permanent? No. Oh, okay. We're going to be in there for like four years, I think. Yay. So it's right out there. I love you guys. I have office hours. If you don't know where my office is, that explains why I'm all alone in there. Good thing to know. Okay. I'll see some of you guys here in a bit. Keeping it as a uh, attendance. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I wasn't here. So. All right. I'm good.